last Sunday, Erev Rosh Hashanah, just a few hours before Rosh Hashanah, I'm cleaning, I'm getting the house ready, I'm watching my kids, and the phone starts ringing. It's my mom. Hi, mom. Have a wonderful year. Sorry for what I could have done better. Dad, great to hear from you. Oh, I just missed a call from my best friend from when I was a teenager, and we haven't really talked, and that was going to be our one chance. And then I get a call from Ari. Ari, the best man at my wedding, my college roommate, my best friend, he calls me. And so I pick up the phone, and we're talking. And he's got little kids, and he's telling me all about the chicken pesto that he's making and uh, all the, the delightful foods he's making for the Chag. And then he says, Fievel. I said, yeah. And he goes, yesterday I did 10 pull-ups. Okay. And I said, truth is, I don't think I could do 10 pull-ups nowadays. He goes, don't you remember? When we were roommates in Tel Aviv, we'd go to the boardwalk. And on this gorgeous boardwalk, there were these pull-up bars. And we would go there, especially on sunny afternoons, because it never rains in Israel over the summer with these beautiful blue skies. And we'd be on the beach, and we would do some pull-ups. And you always did a few more pull-ups than I did. And uh, I'd completely forgotten. And he'd been working really hard, working out. He lost a ton of weight. He's looking better than ever. And then I paused, and I said, you know what, Ari? I'm working here as a rabbi and thinking about the high holidays, and, and I'm so inspired to change. But how did how, you actually do it? How did you make this change happen? And Ari says to me, well, I'll tell you. I had a plan. Two things. Number one, I got myself a trainer. <laughs> and we met regularly, and he pushed me, and we worked out. And number two, uh, my boss here at NBC Studios at 30 Rock, my boss was using the same trainer. And so my boss was accommodating and understood and supportive of this process. And if there was an early morning meeting, he'd make sure it was OK if I came 15 minutes late to make the workout. I said, Ari, you're so brilliant. And it worked. It really worked. Well, I said goodbye, and as I hung up the phone, I realized what Ari mentioned is actually the advice of the rabbis from 2,000 years ago. The rabbis in, in the Mishnah, in the oral teachings, in Perkei Avot, they say something brilliantly simple. They say, in the name of Joshua, the son of Parachia, he used to say, he apparently would say this all the time, he'd go around reminding people, Asei lecha rav. Make for yourself a rabbi. Make for yourself a mentor, a trainer, a coach. Two, konelecha chaver. Buy yourself a friend. Acquire for yourself a friend. And number three, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And I realized this insightful rabbinic teaching is in many ways so pertinent to this time of year. So with your permission, I'd like to delve into this. Make for yourself, make for yourself a rabbi, make for yourself a mentor. What does that mean? It means that when I look at this room, I see dozens and scores of mentors that I can learn from. And it means not hire, not go study under somebody, but make, you can turn anybody into a teacher. You can learn from them, so much so that Maimonides points out, it says the word make. It says make, like Osei Shalom, God who makes peace in the high heaven. Make someone into a teacher. And Maimonides goes on to say, the teacher doesn't have to have an IQ of 184. The teacher doesn't have to be the number one tennis coach in the world. You can find someone, even on your own level, who's also a 4.0 tennis player, right? And you can play with them, and the two of you together can grow as the rabbis teach. When two scholars study together, they both become sharpened, even if they're at both at the same exact level. Two, acquire for yourself a friend. Buy yourself a friend? What does that mean? I understand this to mean invest. 
Invest in a friend. And I'm so lucky. I've invested in some friends, and they've invested in me. And when you have a friend that you invest in, it's like having a car that you invest in, right? You want to make sure the tires are, tip t are top notch. It's like having a tool, a motorcycle, whatever it may be, that you want to be in top form because you need to trust it. You need to be able to rely upon it. And when you have a friend, a colleague, somebody that you can turn to who's going to be supportive and you can rely on, oh, that, that is going to help you achieve where you want to go and who you want to be. Three, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Everyone. Everyone the benefit of the doubt. Well, Imagine if we had a community where people really gave each other the benefit of the doubt. I've worked a lot with teenagers in particular, and I would bring them to Israel, and we'd have a fantastic eight weeks growing, maturing, traveling, being bombarded with experiences. And they come back after eight weeks, a different person, changed, newer, better, brighter. And yet, sometimes the family, friends, communities want to treat them the same way they were before they left. And it was the community that wouldn't give them the benefit of the doubt and the ability to really grow and change. And I think that is the secret of this time, of this season. As mentioned earlier, this is a special Shabbat. It's the Shabbat in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's called Shabbat Shuva, the Sabbath of repentance. And there are 10 days as Rosh Hashanah is on the first of the month of Tishrei and Yom Kippur is on the 10th of the month. That gives us 10 days to grow. And if we're all doing it together, it means hopefully we'll give each other opportunity and space to grow. You're not doing it alone. Oh, I really want to stop speaking Lashon Hara. I want to sp stop speaking negative words about others. Well, Instead of someone saying, come on, why are you acting that way? They'd say, oh, right on. And they'll be supportive. And we do it as a community. I want to share with you some beautiful words by Rabbi Alan Liu. This is what he says. Get this. For 10 days, the gates are open and the world is fluid. For 10 days, transformation is within our grasp. For 10 days, we can imagine ourselves not as fixed and immutable beings, even if it doesn't manifest itself right away. The 10 days of tshuva, these days of awe, aseret yimei tshuva, are days of renewal, days when we are not only concerned with change and transformation, but also with reinvigorating, refreshing, and reimagining our lives. Days when we are obliged to ask ourselves a number of difficult questions. Well, last week after the incredible Rosh Hashanah experience we had here, my wife and I had a chance to walk. Remember the weather, weather was beautiful and almost inviting to go on a walk? So we went on a walk and we started asking ourselves some of these questions. We started thinking about giving and giving back and where do we give? We also started thinking about birthdays. My dad's birthday is tomorrow. I think my wife was subtly hinting that her birthday's coming up, so I wouldn't forget. And we started working together, planning together. Maybe birthday gifts will be donations to a person's favorite charity. Okay, it's a start, but it's a plan. It's more than a resolution, it's a plan. And so I wanna end with this thought. If someone asks you how was Rosh Hashanah, of course, you're going to say it was magical, phenomenal, inspiring, the words, the ilanim, the music, the community. But I hope you might answer this. When someone says to you, how was your Rosh Hashanah this year, 5776, you'll say, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Come back to me in six months after I've implemented my plan, and then I'll tell you how amazing my Rosh Hashanah was. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.